Okay, so I just want to welcome everybody. And again, thank you, Rabbi Klein, for really being here with us and, and doing this for us because it's it's something very, very precious. Um, I want to ask, as I always ask, please let the learning be for my mother, Shane Bas Moshe, and Ruchama Chaya from Abbas Do Pinchas, for Rav Yisrael Noach Ben Yitzhak Matisyahu, for Rav Zacharia Shimon Ben Yitzhak HaKohen, for Hannah Mendel Bas Yisrael. And I just, I, I, I'm so sad to have to introduce uh, two more names. We had a tremendous tragedy in, in, in Cleveland, a tremendous tragedy. Um, we lost two very precious neshamas, two tzaddikim. And I want to say, Rabbi Klein, you don't know how much your words last week when, when the person asked about the Holocaust and you were talking about, I remember you were you were saying something about Achtos and you were saying something about it, two, two people that are such pillars of our community, young, young men, um, I'm going to say first, Binyamin, Ra'al, Ben Gershon, Yeshaya, and Baruch Yosef, Yecheskel, Ben Chaim. Um, they, this is um, Ben Chaifetz, who was going to go to be Menachem Aval. And he asked, he, both of them were pilots. And he asked, because he was not able to get the commercial flight, if this other person, Baruch Taub, who I had the privilege of working with many years ago, just a precious, precious people. And they they were not um, they didn't know each other so well to my understanding, but when they when they spoke about both of them, they 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 were both like just people who who gave of themselves and who were really tzaddikim, really just with families, young families, and Hashem should just I I Rabbi Klein, I take your words, I keep trying to give it over because people are asking, and that's it. So it should just be an aliyah for the Nashamos, and they should just go to the Kisiyak Kavod and Hashem, just bring bring that light and that 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 devekus that we're all starving for. And and that's it. And Rabbi Klein, please give us all whatever you could give us because we need it and the world needs it. And and uh this is where it's at, right, right here. So um without further ado, thank you everybody for being here. And I need it. And I need it. All of us need it. Shamishmar. Hashemishmar. Um, I think I think the last time we spoke, when we spoke about toward the end of was it last, I think it was last week's year, um, when somebody had asked about tragedies and you know, um, we spoke about silence then. Right? We spoke about silence. Um and in Torah. Samach Dalid in the 64th teaching in Lukute Maran, Rabbi Nachman's primary revelation. I can't even call it a safer. It's beyond the safer. <laughs> There's no words for it. Um, but in Torah Samach Dalid, he he links silence with song. He links silence with song. And there's a song. There's a song. There's a melody of a tzaddik, which is able to not answer our questions, um, but to transform our questions into part and parcel of the melody um, in a mysterious way. You know, I'm reminded of a, of a story where a young chassid came to the Balatanya and he had a whole, I may have said this over, he had a whole list of, of questions in Gemara that he was learning in Halacha. Um, oh, pill pull him at questions. He couldn't figure this out and this sheet that didn't fit with that and, and for all the whole shafts, a whole list of questions that he prepared preparing for months. Um, and he came to the Balatanya with his list of questions and he submits it and the Balatanya looks and he reads it down. And to the to the shock of the chassid, the Baltanya looks up, he closed his eyes, and he began to sing. <laughs> he began to sing his famous niggin, Arba Bavis, it's called the four tiered niggin. <speaking in Hebrew> I am. 
And somehow, all the questions were resolved. Somehow, a melody, even though it's not the same form of communication as speech, and it doesn't relate to cognition in the same way, not every question needs to be answered with words that mirror the form that the question was expressed in. Sometimes words don't do, do justice, and it's silence, it's a melody, it's just sitting with, with, with the void, with the, with the unanswerable questions, and just, just sitting with that, and grieving, and mourning, and, and holding space for that, for that in each other, and understanding that we're not the only ones that are suffering and struggling, and, and, um, Be'ez Hashem, we should, we should hear Besurus Taivas, Be'ez Hashem, and sing joyous melodies, um, that are the result of questions being answered, and that are not themselves some form of an answer for the unanswerable questions. And so, Be'ez Hashem, our learning should be Le'ilu Nishmasam, and uh, their legacy should be an aliyah for our neshamas. Um, yeah, I just want to say a word just about the, the 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 shocking nature of this particular tragedy. On paper, it might be a little bit coarse to, to even put it in these terms. On paper, they took off from a particular airport and they didn't make it to their destination right um in an impossibly difficult way of framing things but a way that is still true they took off and they mamish made it to their destination because they weren't flying to another airport they were flying up. They were flying up. They went on a journey, and they and they landed. They landed. Now, why they had to go to a different airport? You understand a different place? I don't know. But what I do know is that in some mysterious, infuriatingly impossible manner, Akadosh Baruch Hu is bringing the world toward its tikkun. And the fact that time after time after time, invariably, those that are tragically ripped from our midst are always the most special among us. Again and again and again and again. Think of it. Again and again and again. Any tragedy that we hear of, on whatever level, there's no way to measure them. And there's no, any, any tragedy. You know this. It's Pasha. It's the gems that are taken, the gems. And they go to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's crown, and they go to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Kisi HaKavit, and they're the ones that know how to look with, a, with an ayin tova on other Jews, and they're the ones that know how to be malam etzchus, and they're the ones that are, that, are, that are moving the world closer and closer and closer to the gula. Does that mean that it's okay? And, and that now, like, oh, all right, you know, that's, that's fine, and it's not painful in a way that we can't even put into words no no it's excruciating but two things can be true at once so let's start with a nigan <laughs> Below <laughs> Ilaha <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Besiata de Shmaya, let's jump in to our Shir on the Heliga Kedush Slavi, the Heliga Tzadik of Levi Yitzchak ben Sar Sasha, whom I'm sure you know that Tzadikim said that just to say that name already awakens a tremendous amount of limutzchus upon Am Yisrael. Just to say that name, Rav Levi Yitzchak ben Sarah Sasha was the name of his mother. Rav Levi Yitzchak ben Sarah Sasha, just to say that is a good thing to say. Just to say the name. See, here we take a look at one of the most famous pieces in the whole entire Sefer. And this is one of those emblematic teachings of the Kedusha Slevi, that when you think of the Kedusha Slevi, you think of this piece. And so it's such a privilege, Be'ezer Hashem, to be able to share this with you. B'siyata de Shemaya. And you'll see what I mean. So the B'ditch verse says like this, the Pasuk in this week's parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling Am Yisrael about the carbon Pesach, the first carbon Pesach ever brought, and the first Pesach ever celebrated, while still in Mitzrayim. Am Yisrael are called upon to take this carbon and to designate it as a Pesach Hul Hashem. It's the Pesach offering. Asks the Berdich of Arav, Yisrael Amin. Yesh Lahavin. We need to understand this. A strange thing. Sha'anu Kairin as Yantiv Hamachuna Batar Bashim Chag Hamatsois. Anu Karin Asai Pesach. This Yantiv, this holiday that the Torah calls Chag Hamatsois, the holiday of the Matzos, we call it Pesach. Why? Why do we refer to Pesach as Pesach? Why don't we apt to call it the same thing that the Torah calls it, which is Chag Hamatzos? Where does this come from? That the Torah says that we should call it Pesach. Everywhere in the Torah, when you see Pesach referred to, it is called Chag Hamatzos. Where does this come from that we call it Pesach? And if we call it Pesach, why does the Torah opt to call it Chag Hamatzos? So the Enoch Sivi says the most beautiful, wonderful thing, the truest thing. He says, the Pasuk says in Shir Hashirim that we're all familiar with, Ani l'doidi v'doidi li. Am Yisrael say, we are, I am, Knesset Yisrael, the collective soul of the Jewish nation says, I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. Ani l'doidi, I'm committed to Hashem. V'doidi li and Hashem is committed to me romantically. We're faithful to one another. We have a bond, we have a connection. But the Bredich verse says that it means something else as well. Hainu, what this Pasuk is telling us, something essentially fundamental about this relationship that we have with Hashem, is that, Hainu sha'anu misaprim shivchai shal baruchu. It is our way, it's our nature, to be constantly talking about the praise of Hashem. In all of our tefillahs, and we're constantly saying, Baruch Hashem, or thank you Hashem, or we're constantly praising Hashem in all different ways. And do you know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is busy with? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Mesaper Shevach Shal Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has bumper stickers on his car that say, thank you, Am Yisrael. That's, that's HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem is busy saying the praise of Am Yisrael all the time. We're praising Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is praising us. Ani Daidi, we're obsessed with Hashem. We have His name on our lips the whole entire day. And this is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu does vis-a-vis -vis us. Hashem is praising us all the time. V'chinhu, and He says the proof of this is when it comes to tefillin. Sha'anu manichim tefillin. The men put on tefillin. Uksiv bahem, and what does it say in our tefillin that we wear? Shevach shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It just says the praise of Hashem. It talks about HaKadosh Baruch Hu taking us out of Mitzrayim. It talks about our faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that we have to love HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shema, Vayim, Shema, all the different parashiyas, the four parashiyas of, of Tefillin. And we're telling about how HaKadosh Baruch Hu took us as His firstborn nation, 
And a Kaddish Baruch Hu redeemed us from Mitzrayim with all these amazing wonders. It says over the praise of Hashem. But Chazal tell us that a Kaddish Baruch Hu also puts on tefillin. HaKadosh Baruch Hu also puts on tefillin. And what does it say in Hashem's tefillin? Says Chazal, the Gemara and Brachis. In his tefillin, it says the praise of Am Yisrael. And with this we can understand that it's written in Tana de the mitzvah that it's a big mitzvah to, to praise the Jewish nation. It's a big mitzvah to, to praise Am Yisrael, to find those points where Am Yisrael is so beautiful and those points where we're doing so well and those points where we're so different than the nations of the world, even on the basic, basic level of the way that we function and the way that we think and the way that we talk and the way that we, it's just a different world. It is a different world. It's a different world, Am Yisrael, to praise Am Yisrael, to talk about other Yidin and to find good points in other Jews. And to talk about those good points to others and to point out different people's strengths. This is a big mitzvah. Big, big mitzvah to do this. Mitzvah l'saper shvachin shal Yisrael. V'yesh l'ashem yisbarach nachas ruach mizeh. And the Tanid Belio says, from Elio Anavi, says that Hashem has great pride and, and great pleasure and great delight from this. Shem l'saper v'shvachin shal Yisrael, where one Jew goes and praises another Jew, talks about the good points of another Jew. Says the Bredichever, hatam, and it appears that this is also reflected in something that Chazal say vis-a-vis -vis halacha as it relates to tefillin. But there's a deeper element as well. See, he says over here, v'nira hatam, mishum siach tefillin. We know there's a halacha, a person who's wearing tefillin cannot take his mind off the tefillin. It doesn't mean that you have to sit there and be completely conscious that you're wearing tefillin the whole entire time because it's not possible. You're davening certainly people that learn after 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 davening and they wear Avinu Tam's tefillin or people like in Eretz Yisrael or certain uh, segments of Am Yisrael that wear tefillin the whole day. It's impossible. But subconsciously to be aware on some level that you're wearing tefillin, even on the most basic level, can't take your mind off of it. And that's why halachically, a person is supposed to be and he should feel his tefillin. So in the middle of davening from time to time, you'll touch the tefillin, you kiss your hand, touch the tefillin, just to, just to keep you aware. You're in tefillin because it's very important for a person to keep a gufnaki when he's wearing tefillin, a certain state of, of, of cleanliness, right? And there are certain things that are usher to do in tefillin. A person needs to be very clean physically, bodily. And in order to make sure of that, the person needs to be consciously aware that he's wearing tefillin so that he's in control. That's, that's on a literal level what this halacha means. It's forbidden to lose Consciousness of this that we're wearing to fill in. Umitzvah al kol adam. It says the Bredichver means something deeper. The Chazal are hinting to us. You know what it's aser lahasiach das from. You know what a Jew should never take his or her mind off. It's a mitzvah for each Jew lasik tamid b'tfilin. Be engaged with tfilin the whole day. What kind of tfilin? What are tfilin symbolizing? That we can be involved with all the time. And this is why this is such a bridge of our peace. Because this is what the Kedusha Slevi was. This is what he represented. This was his message to the world. He's known as the defender of the Jewish nation. This is all he did all day. Just praise Am Yisrael. Find a little bit of merit. And, 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 and arrange for different circumstances. So that he would be able to force a Jew to express his good point and then to take that and to run to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to defend Am Yisrael. This was the Bredichever. Says the Bredichever, don't take your mind off tefillin. What does he mean? Well, if tefillin, as we've mentioned three lines up, represent this, that Am Yisrael is busy praising Hashem because that's what it says in our tefillin. And that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is busy praising Am Yisrael the whole day because that's what it says in his tefillin, says the Bredichever. Be involved in tefillin the whole day, meaning dahainu, meaning to say, Yisrael. Either be busy with telling over the praise of Am Yisrael, 
Don't take your mind off Hashem's tefillin. Which say the praise of Am Yisrael. Because Amrina the Gemara is the Gemara and Brachas. The Avavah Med Aleph says, Tefillin Damari Alma Maksiv Buhu. What does it say in Hashem's tefillin, so to speak? You know what it says? Mika Amchi Yisrael. That's what it says in Hashem's tefillin. There's no one like the Jewish nation. Oiter Yisrael B'Tifara. HaKadosh Baruch Hu crowns Am Yisrael with Tifara, which is beauty. That's Hashem's crown. It's, it's Am Yisrael, or Hashem's crowning jewel. Yisrael alu b'machshava t'chila, like Labavach Rebbe says, it doesn't just mean that Am Yisrael arose first in the divine mind, that Am Yisrael were the first thing that Hashem thought about, so to speak, that served as the catalyst for creation. The Labavach Rebbe says, no, it doesn't say that Am Yisrael arose into the thought process of Hashem. It doesn't say that Am Yisrael are situated within Hashem's thought. It uses the Lashon of Alu B'machshava. And the Lubavitch Rebbe says that what that means is Alu, to rise within the thought, means that Am Yisrael are really rooted in a place beyond thought, beyond the mind. Alu B'machshava. Sure, HaKadosh Baruch Hu thought about us first. We're called the Reishis, Reishis Chachma, right? We're rooted in the earliest thought processes of Hashem, so to speak, as it were, planning this whole chain of, of emanation that we call the Seder Ashtalshalus that ultimately led to the creation of the physical world. It's, but it goes beyond that. Yisrael Alu B'machshav. We're rooted in a place beyond thought. What's beyond thought? What's beyond the mind of a king? It's his crown that sits beyond the thought. And the Lubavitch Rebbe sees in this Maimar Chazal that says Yisrael alu b'machshava tchila. What does that mean? That Am Yisrael rose beyond the thought of Hashem? He says Am Yisrael are synonymous with the crown of Hashem. Am Yisrael are Hashem's crowning jewel. Alu b'machshava. Parenthetically, to relate it to the beginning of this year, do you know what? That realm of the crown is associated with? What encircles Chachma? What realm holds space for Chachma? The Chachma emerges from that place that goes beyond thinking, beyond words, beyond conceptions that we're able to understand. Say Chazal, Siyag Chachma. Do you know what that realm of the enclosure of Chachma is? Shtika. That's the realm of silence. Keser, that realm of the crown, that realm where Am Yisrael is rooted, that realm where HaKadosh Baruch Hu's relationship with Am Yisrael and what he's doing with our nation, it, 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 it is rooted in the place of silence. Yisrael alu b'machshava. It's, it's rooted in a place of siyag l'chachma, which is shtika, which is just shtika. We can't fathom it. It's unfathomable what Hashem is doing. On an individual level, on a collective level, this whole business of gullus, this whole, all the difficulties and challenges and, and, and the, the way that things seem to be falling apart externally, Hashem has a plan. Hashem has a plan. And we need to be silent with it. It doesn't mean we can't be hurting. Two things could be true at once. You feel the pain on a human level, and then you enter into silence. Silence. And that silence is not a silence that's defined by one emotion or another. It's not a silence of emuna, like just totally happy, okay, everything's fine, and I'm just going to stop asking because everything's fine. And, and it's not either a silence of, of bitterness where we feel that there's no use. Silence is unique in that it is all-encompassing. It holds space for conflicting emotions, and that is okay. That's okay. Keser. Siyag l'chachma. Yisrael alu b'machshava. That's where we're rooted. And so to bring us back to this piece for the Redichavar, what's Hashem's crown? Is Hashem's tefillin. What does it say in Hashem's tefillin? Mi kamchi Yisrael. That's all he could say. There's no one like Yidin. There's, there's just no one like us. And, and this is not meant to make us feel like we oftentimes bring it back to this entitled and, and as if we're better off and as if we, we have a right to look down on everyone else. That, that's, the, that's the complete corruption of why it is that we're so special. We're so special because we've been gifted with the mission of bringing our specialness to the nations of the world. 
not to feel, oh, you know, we're, we're so entitled that um, we're better off and we, you know, we become chas v'shalom haughty or, or arrogant or, or, or coarse in any kind of way. On the contrary, mamish on the contrary. We're unique so that we can understand just what it is that we need to bring to the nations of the world without having that uniqueness obscured by virtue of becoming a little bit too close and unsure of what it is that, we, that we're all about. But let us be clear. We are torch bearers. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has entrusted us with a torch. And that torch is called Torah. Mi'eminoi eish das lamai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us a Torah. And that Torah contains things that are unique for Am Yisrael. It's true. Goyish Shabbos Chayv Misa, right? An Anju is not Shaykh to Shabbos right now. But that Torah also incorporates many, many, many ways of living and many guidelines that are completely relevant for every human being that there is. And there are Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, that it should be on our minds, that we should be actively trying, because all of us either work or encounter or walk past on the street. But we have to develop eyes that start to look at humanity as our material, because we're craftsmen or craftswomen. It's our, it's our material. We have to think much broader than we've been thinking in a, in a, in a, in a, in a modern age with the tools of technology and so on and so forth, much broader, much broader. We have to change the world. We have to mamish change the world. So this is the Nakuda, but, but we're rooted in this place of Mikam Chisrael, this special mission that we have. Hashem's tefillin, Hashem's crown. Tefillin de Mari Alma, going back to the piece, tefillin de Mari Alma Maksibbu. What does it say in these tefillin? Mikam Chisrael, who is like my nation, Am Yisrael. So says the Berdichever, either do that and be busy the whole day finding the good points in Yidin and praising Jews. Or be busy the whole day with our tefillin, with our crown, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Keser Taira, the crown of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shekasa behem, Shevach Hashem Yisbarach, that our tefillin Tell over the praise of Hashem. All these different parashiyas that we have in our tefillin that describe the wonders that HaKadosh Baruch has done for us. The ninsa, samamela, if a person goes with this mahalach and you stop a person on the street and you ask him, what are you busy with? What are you really busy with? Outside of all the technical things that you might be busy with on any given day because there are certain chores and tasks and responsibilities. But what, what, what are you doing? What are you busy with? What's on your mind, right? Your answer needs to be unequivocally. Tefillin. Tefillin are on my mind. For men, it's, it's literal. The tefillin are on our mind. But for women, it's figurative. Tefillin are on my mind. Tefillin? What do you mean tefillin? And you say to that person, well, take your pick. Because there are two pairs of tefillin. There's the pair of tefillin of Hashem, and there's the pair of tefillin of Am Yisrael. Tefillin are on my mind. I'm either busy with talking about how, how HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so good, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so sweet, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so merciful, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so present, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is always there, etc. Or, or I'm talking about how the Pintaliya deep inside every Jew is shining. And wants so much and is so healthy and so innately holy and so innately joyous and so innately there, present, busy with tefillin. The Nimsa, and if a Jew is never Messiah Das from tefillin in this mode of understanding, if a Jew never takes his or her mind off of these two holy pairs of tefillin, the Anila Doidi and then the Vidoidi Li, two different pairs of tefillin. That, so he says, Venimsa Tamid Anu Mesapram Shevach Hashemiz Barach, Hashemiz Barach Mesapram Shevach Yisrael, will constantly be busy praising Hashem. And that will cause Rakadash Baruch to be praising Am Yisrael. We'll have more to praise Am Yisrael about. Hashem will have more to praise us about. We'll have more to praise Hashem about. And these two pairs of tefillin strengthen each other and they intertwine. They intertwine. And now he comes back to 
the question that he began with about Pesach. Why do we call it Chag HaMatzos? What are Matzos? And why does the Torah, why does the Torah rather call it the festival of the Matzos? Rashi comments on the Pasuk that tells us that the dough that they carried out on their backs when they ran into the desert after HaKadosh Baruch Hu with total emunah and total trust and total alacrity and joy without being tardy at all, but running quickly as fast as they could. That the dough baked on their back into matzah. The Pasuk says they didn't prepare anything to take with them. They just mamish took the, the dough on their back, right? That's all they took, the shirt on their back, the dough on their back. And Rashi says, Why does the Torah tell us this? Because the Torah is praising us in the context of the matzahs. Anytime the Torah speaks about matzahs, it intends to praise us. Because why do we have matzahs? Why do we eat matzahs? To remember this, that we ran out after HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even though we weren't assured of anything. And shortly after, we're going to read the next week's parsha. all of us know we were pursued by the Egyptian army. It wasn't simple what we did. There was no planning. We didn't say in a couple of months. We went, negate. We went. We just went. And Rashi says, Shemafurish Bekabala, it's written in the Navi, Zacharti Lachesed Nuurayach, Avas Kluloi Sayach, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I remember the love of our youth. Avas Kluloi Sayach, that love that we had, that was captured in this, that the Pasa continues over there, Lech Tech Acharai Bamidbar Be'eretz Loi Zarua, that you just ran after me into an unsown land without knowing where your next meal was going to come from, without knowing that there would be shelter, without knowing what you would be exposed to, the elements, you ran after me. We ran out together like two young lovers. Without any consideration other than, I cannot live without you. Without any other plan. That's all captured in the symbol of the matzahs. The nimsa says the British river, now we can understand. If the Torah is Hashem speaking, and it's telling us how Hashem thinks, and what Hashem thinks about, so to speak, you better believe he's going to call Pesach Chag HaMatzahs, because in so doing, the nimsa nikra Chag HaMatzahs al shem Shabach Yisrael, because Hashem is praising Am Yisrael. Sha'af was habatzik ugais matzahs. That the dough baked into matzahs, and we eat the matzahs to represent this, that we ran trustingly into a wasteland. Because that's what a Kurdish Baruch was said to do. And that's why he says the Torah calls this Yantiv Chag HaMatzahs Al Shem Shavach Yisrael because it intends to praise Am Yisrael. Like we said. It is representative of this that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, is telling over our praise because he loves us so much and that's what he's busy with. He doesn't take his mind off his tefillin and his tefillin is Mikam Chi Yisrael. But va'anu, from our standpoint, what are we busy with? We're busy with praising Hashem. Ani l'daydi. So va'anu kairin hayantiv b'shem Pesach. We call it Pesach al shame because Pesach accomplishes this that it's Shevach Hashem is Baruch, that it praises Hashem. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu skipped over the houses of the Yidin and he protected us and he distinguished between us and the nations of the world. That's us praising Hashem. He calls it Chag Hamatzis to praise us. We call it Pesach to praise Him. Shehu Shevach Hashem Yisbarach Al Derech HaPasuk And this is what's captured in this Pasuk. Ani L'Doidi The Doidi Li We are to our beloved. And we can't have Him and we can't take Him off of our mind. The Doidi Li And He can't take us off of His. And I once thought a number of years ago on a particularly dark night in Yerushalayim, where I walked out of likely the Beis Medrash, I don't remember exactly, or the Shul or Beis Medrash or somewhere where I was learning. And I looked up at the night sky and I, I just saw the stars. 
And I couldn't help but think that on some level, when a Kaddish Baruch Hu looks up at his sky, Kiviachal, we are his stars. And we are the stars that he sees, each and every one of us. We look up, Hashem looks down. He also has stars in his sky. And those stars are Mastike Harabim Kakoychavim, the Pasuk says. Those that are Matstik the Rabbim, those that find justice, that justify the Rabbim, that find a way of finding good in people. Not taking their mind off of realities that need to be corrected. It doesn't, one thing doesn't have to obscure the other. Not believing that nothing needs to be fixed. The world is still in exile, right? The world is in, in a state of Shvira. We, we, we need to believe that things aren't perfect. Things can't be perfect. We have to be moving forward. But by the same token, find a way within that. Find a way within that to be matzik the rabbin, to look at other people with an ayin toiva, to find a way of believing that even if you can't see it on the surface, and we certainly can, if we'll try to look hard enough, even if you can't, shift into the deep faith that at the core of existence is goodness. Because at the core of existence is godliness. And godliness is goodliness. And that is always present in every person. And we've spoken about this before. And, and in every circumstance, look deep, look deep, look deep. And if you don't find it, look deeper. And that's kakoychavim. That's like stars in the night sky. So this is a very berdichever piece because like we alluded to, this was the Kedusha Slavi's whole thing. This was, the, this was the sum total of his message. There are countless stories, so many stories about how, like I said, the Berdichev would almost manufacture scenarios so that he can find a limud schus on, on, on Yidin. Right? He, would, he, would, he would like on purpose put Yidin into uncomfortable positions where they were forced to elicit some very, very deep kernel of holiness that they had inside of them. Um, remember to, uh, rem I'm reminded of one particular story. There are so many stories. The Radich of Arav, Arav Yom Kippur, everybody's sitting in shul, they come early to Lazaka, and, and people are um, crying and, and, and davening, and the Radich of is, of course, you know, he's sitting in the front, talus over his head, his kittel, doing his avoidas, and they're ready to start, and it, it, it reaches the Zman. And the Bredichever is not um, motioning to the Chazin to start Kol Nidre. He's just sitting there. Nobody knows what to do. It doesn't seem like it's, um, it's a positive development, right? Because it seems that there's something wrong, right? And everybody's very nervous. And they're davening even more powerfully and more strongly and time is going by and all the people that were going to be on time were already there and it started getting so late that it started moving into like the time frame where where the stragglers started schlepping in all the stragglers people who you know wasn't clear if they'd come even and they schlepped themselves to shul and they're sitting all the way in the back simple simple jews Coarse people. And even they are starting to get a little bit nervous because time is ticking and it's getting late and it's getting late and it's getting late. And all of a sudden, the Bredichavarov stands up from his seat, he turns around, and with a very purposeful stride, he walks to the very back of the shul and he taps on the shoulder. One of those Yidin that came really late. Um, and, and if he's come late for Yom Kippur, you can imagine, you know, maybe he doesn't come at all, you know, for the other tefillahs, a Jew who, who really needs a Yom Kippur badly, right? And he knows it. And the Bredichver whispers into his ear, he says, I want to see you in, in, in my office. Now, this is not a good, <laughs> a good scene, right? It's Kol Nidre night. Um, the last thing that you want is for the rub of the of, of the shul, for the Rebbe, for the tzaddik, who's been pushing off Kal Nidre to walk over to you and to call you into his office. It's not so good. 
and he's shaking in his boots. Mom is shaking. He sits down in the office, and the Bredichara sits opposite him, and he's trembling, he's shaking. And the Bredichara looks at him, and he says, he says, I have to unburden myself because I, I have something that I need to tell someone. And I, I just, for some reason, I, I feel like I want to tell you. He says, it's not true. He says, what's not true? He says, this whole, th this whole Yiddishkeit thing, it's, it's not true. Hashem, creation of the world, it's, Am Yisrael, chosen nation. It's just, I've, I've, I'm a very smart person. But the he said, I, I do a lot of studying. And it's just, it's not true. And he said, I, I, I'm really convinced that, um, that Christianity is, is, is really aligned with the MS. And I just, I have to tell you because uh, I don't want to lie to you. And this Yid can't, he can't believe what he's hearing. And he's dumbfounded. I mean, it's the most shocking scandal in, in the world. He's shocked. He's shocked. And all of a sudden, an anger starts welling up inside of him. Because anachnu ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim. And there's what the Balatani refers to as a ahava misuseris. There's a hidden love that all of us have deep, 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 deep inside. And it's our grandmother's tefillahs for us. And it's, it's our spiritual DNA. And like a volcanic eruption of, of fury is rising up in this Jew's belly, you know, deep inside of him. And he jumps out of the chair and he tackles the Bredichver to the floor. And he, he starts shaking him, shaking him. You idiot, you know. Mamish, because he's he's not the Bredichver anymore. He's he's a, he's a heretic. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's an insane person who's misleading people, who's fallen into the most insidious trap ever devised by humankind. And Mamish starts shaking him and screaming out, "Moisha Emes, Visayrasai Emes." Moshe Emes, the Sairasai Emes. Christianity, out of your mind. And the Radichavar somehow manages to slip out of his grasp. And he looks on the floor and he sees that this Yid had ripped out like a little bit of the Radichavar's beard in the, in the struggle. And the Radichavar grabs those hairs. And he runs out of the office with eyes shining and a smile on his face. And he, he runs up to the Arn Kodesh. And he holds these hairs in the air. And he says, Rebbe Shalalem, look. When push comes to shove, literally, Moshe Emes Vesarase Emes. And with that, they went into Kol Nidre. You hear this? You hear this? No, this is the Bredichever. This is the Bredichever. Because, again, when push comes to shove at the end of the day, the end of the day, the end of the day, after all the noise and all the stupid drama and all the katnas de moichen and all the, all the distraction and, and all the mundanity of day-to-day -day stupidities, Every yid's heart is on fire. It just is. And like I said, if you can't see that, look deeper. But our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-grandparents before them, again and again and again and again, when given the option of living without Hashem or not living at all, they chose not living at all. That's it. This was the Bredich of Arav. And that's why, like I said, this piece is emblematic of who he was. Because he was a Yid that was never Mesiach Das from his tefillin. Never Mesiach Das. So we don't have time to, to do the whole um, second piece, but I just want to focus you in just on the beginning of it, because it's, it's one Hemshech, even though it's in two parts of the parsha. This is the very last piece in Kedusha Slavi, and he says the following. Just look at the, the first few lines. Nira, he says, it seems. He 
He says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose us. And like we mentioned earlier, we are rooted in Hashem's tefillin, tefillin the Mari Alma. Mika Amchi Yisrael, the place of Shtika, the place of Am Segula, which Rabbi Nachman and other tzaddikim explain what does it mean where Am Segula. On a literal level, it means that we're Hashem's treasured nation. Segula is like a treasure. But in a more colloquial sense, the way that we use the word Segula, it's something that we do. We can't exactly explain how it works, but it's a Segula. You know, it's just a school. Why, why, why does doing this on this particular day or in this particular way and putting a key in your challah, all these different things, how does that work? It's not a rational thing. We believe it's a Segula. Says Rabbi Nachman, that's what it means that we're Hashem's Am Segula. It's unexplainable why this works. We're a segula. We're, we're a total segula. We're Hashem segula. He can't explain it. Maybe he can explain it because it goes beyond explaining. It's the realm of shtika, right? Yisrael, alu b'machshava t'chila, alu b'machshava keser, siyag l'chachma, shtika. Hashem chose us. Lefikach, and that being the case, he says, Ain, listen to these words, ain shum echad rashai loimar al Yisrael shum davara. Nobody has permission to say anything negative about another Jew. Very intense. Not just it's not a nice thing, and it's something we should really try to work on. He says, you don't have permission. Not allowed. Ein shum echad rashai loimar al Yisrael shum davara. We're not allowed to say anything negative about a Jew, about Am Yisrael. Our job is to try to defend Am Yisrael and to find merit in Am Yisrael and to advocate on the behalf of Am Yisrael and to remind Am Yisrael of who they really are and to see that in other people. And it all starts, of course, it all starts with seeing it in ourselves, which is, of course, the hardest part, especially today. It says in the Megillah, uh, Mordechai Tzadik, we're coming up to Purim. What was Mordechai's whole thing? Listen to these words. It says in the end of the Megillah, Mordechai sought what was good for his nation. That, that, that's how the Megillah describes Mordechai. He just loved the Jewish people. He loved them. He wanted to see them thrive. He wanted to see them flourish. He wanted to see them manifest their potential. He believed in their essential goodness. And all he wanted was that it should, it should, it should be allowed to manifest and to come to the surface. The Mordechai, as the Arizal says, is the same gematria as the words Rav Chesed. Rav Chesed. Mordechai was filled with Chesed. Rav Chesed He had one agenda. He just wanted to see that Kaddish Baruch Hu shower Am Yisrael with goodness. The Bedichavar says that when we're washing Negel Vasar, I think we mentioned this in a previous year in a different context, maybe. The Halacha says that we're supposed to lift our head, our hands to our head, to the top of our body. The Beis Yosef says to lift our hands because the word netila, we translate it as, you know, washing the hands. But he says, no, it could, it could mean to, to pick something up. Lintal yadayim means literally to pick the hands up. Lashen hagba means to lift. Because he says the rule is as follows. Each person is split and divided into three parts. There's harosh in my varm shalarosh. There's the head with all the different functionalities of the head. There's the ears. There's the nose, the eyes, the mouth, with all the senses that are related to the mind, the thought. And then there's the torso, yadayim, and the guf. And then there's the bottom of the person, the raglayim, the legs down to the feet. Three basic parts of the um of the of the person. The in the harosh, he says, the capacities of the head. The eyes, the ears. Why do we have eyes? And why do we have ears? What are they for? He says what eyes and ears are for is to look toward Hashem, 
meaning to find Hashem in everything, to look at nature and realize, like we try to give over in this year, that nature does not conceal Hashem, but nature reveals Hashem, which is the big chiddush of, y- of Yiddishkeit, that spirituality doesn't mean removing yourself from living. It means embracing life completely, but with consciousness, which is the key point that many people miss out on because they say, oh, you know, because the Yiddishkeit means just live life. Yes, but you can also get stuck there, right? So it has to be a synthesis and integration of the the, the most meditative, mystical, spiritual, transcendent consciousness there is plugged into life. That That's what we need, right? So to use the eyes to look upon Hashem, to use the ears, to listen to good words, and to listen to Hora'ah, to, to find the Torah in everything that you hear, and to listen to Torah. And here's probably the most explicitly Burditch of a line in the entire Kedusha Slavi. You ready for this? The only reason that the mouth was created is is to speak words of Torah. That's why we have a mouth. The Berdichever sees a Jew with a mouth and he says, the reason that you have a mouth is to speak good about Jews. That's it. That's why we have mouths. And that's how it relate that that that's the nature of the, what's called the Avri Harish, the head. By Yadayim, now the Yadayim, the arms and the body, that's Miramzim al Ahava, right? That, that hints to different emotions that are more oriented and, and connected with the heart and represented by the heart, different feelings, love and awe and fear, and 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 all these different kinds of emotions that we can feel. Tanukish Magbia, Magbia Avalamala. And so he says that means that when we lift our hands to the head, what we're doing is we're taking that part of us, that part of our function. It doesn't just mean the, like the physical torso, right? But it means the part of our functionality that can oftentimes become obscured by the lower elements of our feelings when we're not conscious, right? And we're just living life like most of us do most of the time. And that's that's the struggle, right? But when we wash our hands, and we lift our hands to our head, what we're doing is we're elevating all of the emotions and we're aligning them with the clearer part of our understanding that the reason that we have eyes and ears and things that are impacted, or or rather things that impact the emotion based on what we hear, what we see, is only for Kedusha. So we're lifting up the emotions and the legs, Baraglayim, and the legs, Hint to the faith that it takes to even do that. Because it takes a lot of faith to wash your hands and to lift them up to your head. There's no (laughs) pragmatic reason why you would ever do that, unless you're like washing your hair or something, right? There's no reason one would do that. It takes faith. It's mamish, a, a, a conscious movement of the body that's saturated with amuna, that something's happening when I take my hands. And I lift them up to my head. It's a very, very deep thing. And in so doing, you just got your feet involved to your legs. So the whole of your being physically and the spiritual counterpart of all of those parts of the body are wrapped up in Kedusha. When we wash our hands for, for bread or for Natilas Yudayim in the morning, and we raise our hands to our head. All of us is wrapped up in emuna, in in connection to Hashem. So we don't have time to finish the rest of the piece. You'll take a look at it as Hashem. It's 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 a little bit hard to see how everything connects there, but you'll take a look. It's it's the the last the last piece um, in the parsha, I believe, or the second to last piece. But at the very end, it starts with um, Hayom is the is the Dibar Maschal. So this is this is a bracha to, to myself and to all of you. And, and I know for myself that it's something I have to work on. Um, tefillin de Mari Alma. Not to be Mesiach Das from Tefillin. To train ourselves to naturally be looking for the good in ourselves, for the good in others. To have Hashem on our on our lips, Baruch Hashem, the Ezus Hashem, to speak this way, to train our 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 mouths and our our way of speaking, that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is constantly constantly on our on our tongue, but also 
to speak about, about Am Yisrael. Go out of your way to find something good to say about another Jew. Anytime that you're speaking to somebody, you're speaking about somebody else, find something good that you could say. Just do it. It brings the world toward Geula. It brings Nachas to Hashem, just like any parent gets pleasure when, when somebody comes and they, and they compliment their son. It's just, it's Nachas. They're giving Nachas to Hashem. Giving Nachas to Hashem. And when a Kurdish Baruch who hears that, that we're looking and finding the goodness that's latent within every Yid and within Am Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is in, you know, I could also. I could also. You're right. You're Taka right. They're so sweet. They really believe that Moshe Emes Vesera say Emes. They really, even the simplest Jews, they really believe that. And Hashem begins to shower that element with Siata Deshmaya, the Siata Deshmaya that it takes to find the strength and the courage to manifest. And to become our true identity. And that's the struggle. And uh, we should emerge victorious. So let me let me just end with a niggin just to lock it in. I forgot. Usually I end with a niggin. I started with a niggin. Well, I'll end with a niggin also. Just the last uh, minute or two.